Yo, man, this chapter, this chapter was, what a great chapter to be a part of the final chapters for 2017. Just, this was such, such, such a phenomenal chapter. I, I, I'm just going to say right now that I was just really pleased with how this chapter was because let me kind of, you know, do a little bit of a brief reason why I'm so hyped up and why I'm even actually doing a video right now this early for One Piece. So I was actually staying up late watching the One Piece anime with my friend. We're in the middle of the Fishman Island arc. I've been saying it quite a few times that I've been re-watching One Piece. He's a first-time watcher. We're going through the series. He's loving it a lot. He loves the new opening song for Fishman Island. Just, you know, we're having a blast, basically. And all of a sudden, I decided to just, you know, check the chapters, all, all that. You know, the site where the chapters come out, MS. And I saw One Piece is out. I'm like, whoa, One Piece came out very early. I'm like, this is, um, hmm, it's coming out like at 12.30 my time. I'm like, you know what? I'm wide awake. I know I'm going to be up for a while. Let's see how this chapter is. Let's see if I want to do a video on it. So, I read the chapter. Started off, very good chapter. Like, it just started off really good. Like, a solid One Piece chapter. But then, when it got around, like, the 10th page and onward, my face, my facial reaction was literally Chopper's reaction at the end when he was looking through the binoculars, looking at Carrot, doing what she did, and his face was like... Like, his shock face, that was me. That that was legit me after witnessing what she just did to Big Mom's crew. It was complete and utter savage. That's what it was. So, I'm just going to say, I'm not usually one of those type of people that like to, you know, constantly go around and say, Nakama, this person needs to be Nakama, this person needs to be Nakama. I'm not usually one of those type of people, okay? I'm not. However, I want to be that guy. I, I, I'm going to be that guy right now, okay? I, I'm being that guy. Carrot for Nakama, okay? I I'm sorry, you know, I'm gonna even put that in the title. Carrot for Nakama. It, it, it will be in the title. I, I trust, trust me right now, that will be in the title. Or that word, at the very least, Carrot for Nakama, will be in the title. Because of this chapter. Glorious. Straight up glorious way to kind of let us know that Carrot is very strong. She is definitely not weak. I mean, we already knew that. But just seeing what she demonstrated in this chapter, she does have the potential to be a part of the Straw Hat crew. And like I said, I'm being that guy right now. I am. Because right now, seeing how epic she was, what she was doing to mid-tier fodder type class of Big Mom's crew was ridiculous. Because she was just so quick, going around, and I, I swear she was using, like, Gepo. That that's what it looked like to me. And she also was using Electro as well. She was using, you know, what the Minks have, Electro. And she was actually shocking everyone. Like, she put Electro on her, like, claws, shocking everybody. And then also when she bit them as well, bit the individual people, she also shocked them too. I'm like, yo, this is epic. Her fighting style is, like, just utter savagery and she's going around just slicing them up she's like you know jumping real quick like a freaking rabbit and then all of a sudden when she bounces off so when she flips upside down I'm like I, I love her I, I love her I mean I already like Car uh, Carrot's design already but now seeing what I just witnessed especially especially that transformation yo 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 like I'm, I'm sorry I'm getting hyped right now just I, I'm, I'm thinking of the picture the panel in my mind I just can't can't help but getting hyped right now, just seeing that transformation to Carol. Like, she just gets up and all that, she just looks at the moon, and you just see her transform, like, this roaring face, which reminded me a lot of Chopper's monster point, by the way. But she transforms and all that, and then she has this, like, very calm-looking expression. She looks more like a rabbit, like an adult rabbit, basically. And her eyes have changed, her ears are just more pronounced and all that, and her tail, oh my... Her tail, it reminded me of something of like a nine tail fox from Pokemon. Since I have been playing a lot of, you know, Pokemon Ultra and Moon recently, I couldn't help but be reminded of like, you know, a nine tails when I saw that. I was like, that's so beautiful. It looks so beautiful. And also the description from what Chopper said, she has red eyes now and solid white hair. Now that automatically just makes me, oh. I'm a big fan of white hair and red eyes. That's a big thing I love. And just seeing that, I'm just like Nakama. She, she gotta be Nakama. She gotta, she gotta be Nakama after that. She, she has to be. It's too quality. Oda, please don't do this to me, okay? Please don't be trolling me right now. Please let me know that this is a Christmas gift. Like, Oda is blessing us with a Christmas gift, saying, here you go, here you go, my fellow fans. This is Nakama. Now, now I know many are gonna say, like, chibi, 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 chibi. 
Jim may just join the crew, okay? So there's just no way we're going to get another Nakama, which I understand that, okay? But if there is anything I want, okay? If there's one thing I want, I want this. I, I really want it. So anyways, I want to I want to stop discussing it. Just the overall fighting style, the how she was just jumping around through the air, using Electron, all that, shocking them. I love it. Her fighting style is very unique and something I would love to see more of in future parts of the series if she does become Nakama. But I want to end it there, okay? Let, let me carry on in the next scene. So let's talk about the beginning segment. Luffy and Katakuri round two is beginning. It is officially started at the start of this chapter, and we have it to where Luffy walks up to Katakuri. Katakuri's like, well, you know, uh, you could have ran away. You didn't have to come back. Like, why would you come back? I mean, it doesn't make much sense. I mean, everybody knew you were fighting me. So, there really isn't anything bad about you going and running away because you were fighting me, which makes a lot of sense. Kata Curry basically saying is, he's just such a top dog. Like, this man is so ridiculous that anyone that fights him, and if you run away from him, no one's really going to laugh or make fun of you because he's just that ridiculous. That's what he was basically trying to say to Luffy. However, Luffy... He, no, he doesn't back down from a fight, and so when he's like coming back, he's like, no, I'm going to defeat you. He's like, no, that's not one of the options I said. I also do like what he said to Luffy. He's like, Luffy, did you come back to try to join the crew? You know, join Big Mom Pirates and all that? To beg and all that? Because you realized how different we are, for instance, in terms of power level? I was like, whoa, whoa, does this actually imply that Katakuri respects Luffy to that degree to where he would even think of that, that just, that makes you wonder. I mean, for him to go out of his way to even say that to Luffy, it makes you wonder if Katakuri does respect Luffy to that degree that he's willing to actually see if Luffy wants to join. That is very interesting. I wonder. I really wonder if, you know, it wasn't Luffy, okay? Like, if Luffy somehow did a non-Luffy thing and was like, yeah, I'll join, I wonder if he would have accepted Luffy. That's what I'm very curious about. I'm really curious that that was just like, Katakuri just saying that just to make fun of Luffy, or if he was actually doing that because he respected him in some way. I'm curious about that, but we'll find out in due time most likely, but we'll see. Anyways, besides that, let's get into the Big Mom stuff. So Big Mom, she's uh, slimming down. So, now I probably am not going to be the only one to mention this. I'm probably not. Because I know there's many, many readers out there of One Piece that have rewatched the anime, reread the manga dozens of times. So I know for a fact I'm not going to be the first one to say this. However, I want to say it regardless because there's probably some of you that have not heard it, and maybe I'm the first one that's making you aware of it. Big Mom is slimming down. Now, we have obviously seen quick glimpses with little panels here and there, especially like last chapter with a flashback of what we got with Pound, we saw Skinny Big Mom. And I didn't really mention it. I actually did not mention it at all in the last chapter review because I really didn't know how to feel about it. That, that's why I actually didn't even say nothing. I just, I, I thought it was like some form of art error or something. That, that's what I was assuming. I was looking at things wrong. That's what I thought. I want to be honest. That's exactly what I thought. I thought it was like an art error or maybe... I was just thinking too hard and thinking that Big Mom just looked way too different or something. I just thought it was. But at the end of the day, I gotta remember, this is Oda. This is a man that foreshadowed so much throughout the beginning of One Piece to where what happened in the Whitebeard War to further on. It's just, this man is just that good of a writer. And after rewatching the anime, I know now, it's clear as day, how much he really does love to plan things out. But anyways, though, since I have been rewatching One Piece and a lot of the arcs are fresh in my mind, what Big Mom did... When she's, like, slimming down, it makes me wonder if she's doing life return. Just to give an FYI what life return is, it's the ability to control all aspects of your body. We saw that from, uh, Kuma a long time ago from, you know, CP9, and we also saw it from Rob as well. Rob used, you know, life return too. So, it really makes you wonder, since we've always seen a limited amount of this, and it's also implied that maybe, you know, the Medusa sisters, they could also do that too, it makes you wonder if... Big Mom is somehow capable of that because she is slimming down. Is she is she slimming down because she knows life return? Or is it because she hasn't been eating and somehow there's just some form of negative effect when she doesn't eat, she just starts to slim down. And there's a lot of things I could talk about I want to theorize in a second, but I I wonder if this is life return going on with Big Mom. I just want to point that out. I wonder if it is. I'm very curious about that because we clearly saw Big Mom in a skinnier state a long time ago, especially with Pound. So, it's, it makes me curious. It really does make me curious 
what's going on there, what Oda is trying to imply. But anyways, though, let's talk about what also could be going on, okay? So with Big Mom skinning down, it's obvious one of the big ways you can pull from this is that she's skinning down because she has an eight. For instance, she wants the wedding cake, she has an eight. And so many would assume she is, you know, skinny now, or she's getting skinnier because she's not eating, which in turn could possibly make her weaker and weaker. That's where I'm going with this. There is a possibility, since we do know that Big Mom is literally like a tank. Like, she she walked through the earth, she straight up tanked like a lightning to the face and all that, got up like it was nothing. I mean, she is literally traveling across the ocean like it's nothing. I mean, she is insanely OP, okay? Now, we know that she can't take much damage at all. She tanks basically anything, and that's why, you know, Capone and all them had to make this long, elaborate plan just to be able to bring her to her knees, just to be able to do anything to her. And so, after all that still, as we saw, was not enough. But that's the big thing here. I wonder if her skinnying down in turn weakens her to where she cannot tank as much. But maybe there's also another effect that maybe where she's a lot stronger, a lot faster, whatever it may be, but maybe she's not able to be as durable where she can't tank damage. That could be a thing going on here I want to point out because of her, you know, becoming very skinny. Now anyways, let's move on to the next thing. So, a little funny moment to quickly mention. Let's talk about the cannonballs. So, the cannonballs, they're homies. That seems like a, such a bad idea. I, I'm just going to say, that's, that really seems like a very bad idea. Having sentient cannonballs. What? I mean, we've seen so many wacky things on this island and all that, and in this arc, that it's kind of obvious we should expect this by now. It just sentient cannonballs seem to be a very bad idea, because look at what, you know, Nami and everybody else did. They tricked the cannonballs, and they flew off into the ocean. And so this lets us know that they're really... Not that strong. I mean, well, they're probably strong. They're just, they're not that smart. So you, they can't really dish out the damage like they should because they have a mind of their own. But they clearly don't care about sacrificing themselves because they were willing to just go up against the ship, the Sunny, and try to take it out. So it's clear as day that they don't care about their own well-being. It's just they're not really that intelligent. Now, besides that too, we also have two people pop up. We have Daifuku and Smoothie pop up, which has a big, big fleet pop up, which puts... Puts the Straw Hats in a bad position right now because Daifuku is no weakling, okay? He he is no w a weakling. Smoothie, debatable, okay? I mean, she's probably not weak at all, but everything we have seen from her thus far from this arc of One Piece, she is very, very, very pointless. Like, uh, like I said, I'm not saying she's weak because there's a lot of potential. She's incredibly strong, but... From what we've seen so far, she's just very useless in terms of everything else we have seen from all the other characters from Big Mom's crew. And so, I was like, Smoothie obviously would be in the back. Daifuku in the front, because this man is a monster. So, I find that very funny, just to me, just to think about that. But, Carrot, though, she's going in and fighting all of this. She's willing to go in and, hopefully, by what was stated in this chapter, Chopper might go monster point with Carrot and start fighting and taking out the Armada. That would be cool. I would really love to see that. Please, Oda, do that for me. That would, that would be a great way to end off this year of One Piece. And so that's what I want to talk about last. So, brief FYI, just to make sure everybody understands, many are saying that we're probably not going to be getting a chapter next week, okay? That is a possibility. Now, like I said, that most likely could happen. Because when it comes to the end of the year, Shonen Jump takes breaks. And so when Shonen Jump takes breaks, obviously that means no chapter. No chapters for any series in Shonen Jump. That doesn't just mean One Piece. That means The Promised Neverland, Boku no Hero Academia, you get my point. No other series will have a chapter for the rest of the year. Usually this can be around a one to two week break. That's what happens every time at the end of the year. And if for some reason you're not used to this, I'm just letting you know. Now, we could possibly get a chapter next week. We, we could possibly get one next week. But then after that, we're probably not going to have a chapter for two weeks or so. Or we might not get a chapter next week or the week after that. Or we might get chapter no chapter next week and then a uh, chapter after that, but then no chapter after that. So basically, we don't really know right now. The schedule is very wonky. For all we know, we could have a chapter next week or not. I just wanted to make sure everybody is aware of that. So this could possibly be the final chapter of the year. Just making sure everybody knows. But I'm going to assume we're going to have one more chapter before the year is in. It like ends and it's done. I want to see one more. Oh yeah, I have one last thing I want to talk about. And before I actually say that, I actually got done recording the video, was sitting down, about to edit it, and then I realized, wait a minute, I, there's something I want to talk about. I forgot to mention one big thing that needs to be mentioned. 
And so, let me start with that. So basically, as we know how Carrot is, her transformation, Su Long, how crazy that transformation is, it makes you wonder something, okay? If she is this strong, and she was trained by Pedro, imagine how ridiculous Pedro is. Just imagine how ridiculous that man must have been with his, you know, Moonline Su Long form. I... I Yo, just my mind is like boom right now. Just thinking about how strong that man must have been if he could transform. And then on top of that, just imagine Neko and Inu. Oh my. Neko Mamushi would have been ridiculous and so would Inu. Oh my. It like, it look, once again, just pointing this out. If Carrot is this strong, Pedro on a whole new level, then Neko and Inu insane they're, they're broken <laughs> they're just straight broken so yeah that just that's something i wanted to point out and have everybody really take a moment to think about how strong those you know three characters would be if they were to look up in the moon and transform but also another thing to take note of this also lets us know that peckham's peckham's can transform and peckham's if he can transform I wonder how broken he is with his devil fruit like his turtle devil fruit i'm very curious on how broken he is with that devil fruit while transforming into Su Long. I'm very curious about that because I can't imagine how powerful he is. Maybe this would explain why Peck or Peckham's could only be stopped by you know, like Pedro. Pedro knew how to stop Peckham's. That's what I'm assuming that's being implied there. I wouldn't put it past Oda to hint at that because Peckham's apparently is very strong and it does seem like the Big Mom Pirates do know about the transformation of the Minx, for instance, too long. So it makes you wonder if Peckham's is insane when he transforms. So I just wanted to point that out. I want to end this video here. Just something really quick I wanted to add on to. So yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. How'd you feel about, you know, Carrot? Do you think Carrot should be Nakama? Please be honest in the comments below. Carrot should definitely be Nakama though. Let, let's just be real here. And if you enjoy this video, please, you know, subscribe and leave a like. It helps me out a lot. So I love you guys. You have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. And sorry for getting so giddy. I've just felt my love for One Piece again thanks to me re-watching the series. It just, it's so fun. It, it, it's so fun recently just talking about One Piece. So forgive me for that if I get a little bit too giddy. But yeah, I love you guys. You have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.